WGT Flares. Flint here again. Another video. Um, if you happen to try to find this video uh, a little while ago when it first came out, I had to delete it because when it got onto YouTube and I looked at it on YouTube, all of the uh, numbers were a little blurry. So I had to make a whole new one with bigger numbers. You can see it a lot better without a magnifying glass. But anyway, here's a uh, a better view of the approach calculations that I use for my playing. And uh, you can use this even if you're just using a calculator, or you can do it if you like using spreadsheets. This will work either way. The uh, calculations are down here. And I'll first do it like you're making a spreadsheet. And then once that's done, I can do it uh, with a calculator because it'll be you know a little bit more easier figured out if you got numbers up here but for the spreadsheet i us do this together for a little generic thing for the video you've uh, got the yellow boxes which you'll be filling in and your shot right here after it's all done uh, we'll tell you how hard you'd actually hit the ball or how many yards you need to go to make whatever the shot is but you've got your actual yardage your wind speed your tailwind or headwind. Uh, your tailwind will be or your headwind will be 180. Your tailwind will be minus 225. So I've got this up here, so you know it's one to put. And then your wind percentage. Your wind percentage is like a clock. You know, you got your little wind uh, flag arrow thing over here on the game. Of course, uh, facing straight up, there's 100 percent tailwind. Straight down is 100 percent headwind. All these down here are headwinds, and all these are tailwinds. Nine o'clock or three o'clock is a straight side wind. It's about one o'clock would be 75%, two o'clock, 25%, in between 50%, and so on. But that's what I mean by percentages uh, of the arrow facing. And it really doesn't matter. You don't have to be perfect, you know, trying to strain your eyes, you know, trying to say, okay, is that say 50%, is it say 55%? or say 60 percent um you can be within you know five even ten percent difference uh even with you know like a 250 yard shot ten percent is going to be around a yard off so we have to be exact on uh on the percentage you know like i say you got up to even a 10 percent window plus or minus but that's your win percentage and you got on the configurations you got A, B, C, and D, which is up here. And uh, you got your up and down for your elevation. For elevation, uh, up you'll multiply by 35%. Down you'll multiply by minus 20%. So we'll go ahead and put these up here. Make sure they're in percentage, which they are. So up is 35% and down is minus 20%. And then you need to combine these two boxes together. So you need to have two boxes next to here too. Get these a border around them. So on your up is uh, your up elevation times 35%. And uh, remember on your Excel spreadsheet for my uh, putting video I did on calculating your putting distance. Your asterisk is multiply, forward slash is divide, and plus is plus and minus is minus. So up elevation, this will equal your up times 35%. And your down equals your down times minus 20%. And then combine these two together, use this box up here. And you want to add your up and your down. So this would equal this plus this. That way, if you got a down elevation, it'll take a, a negative from zero, and it'll just put the negative up here. Whoops. <laughs> there we go. See, put the negative up there. And of course, if you got a positive for an up, it'll put the positive up there. So let's make sure you got the other one blanked out. So if you don't, We'll give you a weird number. <laughs> so make sure that's blanked out or zero. Doesn't matter. But 
You don't want to have a number in both boxes. So they won't get the correct uh, configuration. All right, now, so you got A, B, C, and D. So A equals your yards times your wind speed. Now let me put speed here. There you go. So this equals your yards times your wind speed. And then B is your tailwind or headwind times your wind percentage. That equals direction times percentage. Whoops. Divide, not times, divide. <laughs> Divided by your win percentage. And C is A divided by B equals A divided by B. Okay, and then D will be your this answer plus your yard. So it's sort of like a circle. Start out here and you end up back here. So D equals whatever C was plus your yards. So to put these all together and put some numbers up here, say 150 yard, 10 mile an hour wind, let's do a tailwind at 25%. Okay, so let's go back to the calculator part. Now if you did it on a calculator, this would be the number that you would hit to go 150 yards. Because that would be your yards times your wind speed, 1,500. And you'd have to, you know, remember that number or put it in your calculator memory. And then you would take your uh, your tailwind or headwind divided by your wind percentage. So it would be minus 225 divided by 25%, which would give you minus 900. And then you would... Uh, to go to C, you would divide 1,500 by uh, minus 900 to get minus 167. And you basically take that 167 from 150 and to get to 148.33. That's if you're calculating it. Okay? And then when you go to your up, you take that 148.33 if it's an up, and you would add 1.75 to that and that would be your actual uh, distance you need to hit. Or if it was down, you take 5 uh, times negative 20%, and you take 1 yard off of that and make it 147.33. That's for calculating. And now you probably know why a lot of people like using spreadsheets. Because, <laughs> I mean, doing a calculator, once you get used to it, it'll be, you know, you can do it pretty quick. But to learn it, it does take a while. But that's, this is why a lot of people like using spreadsheets. Now back to the spreadsheet, for the actual shot, like I said, you want to take this plus that. And you want to do plus because if you do plus, it'll actually take that one off. Or if you got a up wheel, of course, you plus it would add that. Okay? So you would take equals D, that's what this is right here, D plus or minus your elevation for calculating, or for spreadsheet, it'd be D plus the elevation. So that equals D plus that there. So we combine these two boxes for up here. So once again, if it's five up, it has a 175, five down, it takes away the one yard. For your shot okay that's how you calculate your distance you need to hit the ball to make your yardage now for your wind aim which is over here it's a little bit easier than all this stuff up here for calculating wise it's actually your true distance which means it's the 150 not the figure distance but the true distance so your true distance divided by 100 then you'll take whatever that is then take your wind speed, multiply it by wherever that answer was, A, and then uh, multiply that by your wind differential. Now your wind differential 
your your win percentage and your win differential needs to add up to be 100 percent so basically you'll just take 100 uh, percent minus your win speed for your win differential Okay, so this would equal 100% minus your win percentage. Okay, so 75, if you have a 30 mile an hour win, it'd be 70, 75% uh, or 75% win, that'd be 25. So your win differential, uh, Your wind differential is what makes the ball move to the left or the right. So, of course, the wind percentage affects your forward motion of the ball, because that's what's either blowing in your face or away from you, is your wind percentage. Your differential is what's blowing to the left or the right. Like, you got a 100% straight tailwind, that means, of course, zero differential, because it's going straight forward. You got a 90% tailwind, it's blowing your ball forward, 10% is blowing it to the left or right, depending on which way the wind's going. Okay, that's your wind differential. It affects your left or right uh, of your ball. All right. Got back down there. Okay, that's your wind differential. Now, to figure out A, you need to do your true distance. Like I said, your true distance. And divide that by 100. So that equals your true distance divided by 100. Okay, it would be 1.5. So back to the calculator, the way you would do it would be, you say 150 divided by 100 is 1.5. So then you would take your wind speed, which is 10, times 1.5, times point, or times 75% or 0.75, and then uh, divided by... And this number right here is what you adjust for your ball, since you know different balls uh, or the wind affects different balls different different ways. So for me, on headwinds, I have to use a four, and tailwinds and sidewinds, I use a three because it seems to move my ball further on uh, tailwind and sidewinds than headwinds, and. Uh, this last number here, three or four, if you need to, uh, if your ball's not moving far enough or moving too far, you need to adjust this number. If you need to uh, shorten the distance, you'll raise the number. If you need to lengthen the distance, then you uh, lower the number. I'll show you what that means here in a second. Let me get this set up here. So headwind, tailwind, sidewind, and of course punches. So on the headwind, that equals your wind speed times what A was times your wind differential divided by 4. Okay, and your tailwind is the same figure, but it's divided by 3. So it equals wind speed times A times differential by three okay and what I mean by adjusting this last number here let's say for example we're all got a headwind and you move this two and three quarter squares that's what this means uh, how many squares you want to need to move it you know two and a little over two and three quarter and three and three quarter squares if it's a tailwind or sidewind anyway let's say let's say we got a left to right uh, headwind and I move it two and three quarter squares over to the left. But it uh, lands about probably, let's say, three yards to the right of the pin. That means I didn't move it far enough over to the left, but I need to move it more. So that number needs to go up. So I would change that four to a three, which makes that number go up. Okay, so. I try it again, I move it three and three quarters, but it's, it lands a little bit uh, still to the left of the pin. That means I moved it too far to the left. 
So what I would probably do is, well, I went from four to three, then you go in the middle and go three, four, and five. See, it moves it uh, down a little bit. So that's what I mean by adjusting it to your ball. So you need this number to go up. This last number goes down. If you want these numbers to go down, this last number to go up. Okay. Just the last number. Now on your punches, your punches is 75% for me. <laughs> That's the number you adjust to for yourself, but your punches are 75% of your headwind. So that would equal your headwind times 0.75. Since you know your punches aren't in the air as long, so the ball doesn't the air the wind doesn't affect your ball as much. Okay, now what I call a punch aim or a putt aim. Uh, putt aim is it's now I'm probably on the game explain a little better, but basically, if you do your approach, you know you uh, hit your space bar or go to camera one to get, move your aimer for your approach. And the camera's up in the air that's a regular approach uh, view but if you get a certain uh, yardage away from the pin that uh, a regular approach view turns into what i call a putt aim view and that is whenever you do the view and the camera is just behind the pin and it's like sitting on the ground so let me and uh, go to the uh the game and uh sorry about that because on a regular approach view, one square equals three yards. And when it goes to the putt aim, one square is only one yard. So if you're moving for a punch, you're moving a little over two squares out. And it's a putting view, you're not moving it enough. So let me go to the game real quick and I'll show you what I mean the difference between the two. Okay, here on the PGA hole one, show the difference between the uh, regular approach view and the putting aim view is what I call of course like I said on the uh, regular approach view it's like the cameras in the air if you hit your space bar or go to camera one and see I'm 37 yards away if I move it one square back I'm 40 yards away So one square is three yards on the approach. But going to get a little closer here. That's close enough. Yeah. So on this view is what I call the putting aim view, where the camera is, you know, right behind the pin and it's like it's on the ground. So on here, if I move the square, 23 yards, move the square closer, 22 yards. So you've got one yard for the putting aim view and three yards for the regular approach view. So, um, you have to move the square out a little bit further if you're doing it from a one yard square than you would from a three yard square. So that's what I mean just between the approach view and the uh, putting aim view. Alrighty, back to the sheet here. So on the punt, putt aim, it's pretty simple. You just take your punch aim, multiply it by 3.75. So that would equal punch times 3.75. Okay, so let me make this a shorter. So I got a 25 yard punch. Okay, now if I went to the one, you know, number one camera or you know, your view to get your aim in. And it was a putting aim, and I looked at this and only moved it out just a little over a quarter of a square. I'd be about a square off because I need to move it one little over one and a quarter squares out. 
because I'm looking at a one yard square instead of a three yard square on the putting aim. So that's why that's a little bit different because of the different sizes of the squares. Okay. And also on the wind aim, if it's straight three o'clock or nine o'clock, it's a side wind. Don't want to put zero for your wind percentage because it won't calculate. Okay, you want to put one. Okay. The zero won't it won't calculate with a zero. But you got your wind differentials, 99%. It's pretty close to 100. Uh, wind percentage is one. And like I said at the beginning of the video, I was explaining this here. You know, 5%, 10% is not going to make a lot of difference. Let me go to 250 here. See, it's 248.89. Okay, now let me go to 10%. See, it's only one yard. And with a headwind, 249.14, so I go to 10%, it's a little over a yard. So, you know, like I said, plus or minus 5 to 10%. Don't strain your eyes on uh, trying to get the exact percentage on the wind clock. Because, you know, 10% is, uh, you know, not that much. So, for example, if this is facing, say, about right here, you can't tell. Is that is that 55 or is that 60? Or even is that 55 or is that 75? Then if I can't tell which one it is, I just go for the middle. So I'm, my eyes are having a bad look day. <laughs> I can't tell if that's 50 or 75. Well, I just go for the middle. I might hit 65. You know, just go for the middle number. So don't strain your eyes on the uh, wind arrow over there. You know, because you've got a good 5 up to 10% window where it doesn't make a whole lot of difference on your, uh, on your shot. Makes a little bit more difference on the aim, but then you're still talking about you know, two or three yards. And, <laughs> you know, WGT, sometimes you don't get the wind differential it says you should get. So, <laughs> um, perfection is not something you want to expect on WGT. But anyway, that is uh, how you do the calculations for the approach shots with your wind aim. And if you have any questions or comments, just put them in the comment box below. And thank you for watching, and have a great day.